Welcome to the Poor Man's Gourmet Kitchen, where we share gourmet recipes at a low budget wonder. Now check this out. Here I've got boneless chicken breast. I'm going to cut it up into some thin strips here. That's right, we're cutting it up into thin strips. It's not your traditional ground and pound beat your meat recipe. We need ground chicken. So here I've got eight boneless chicken thighs. I'm going to take each one of these, roll them open, feel around on the inside for possible left bone. And we'll cut each one of these in half as well. Now you can purchase ground chicken if you prefer, but this way I can ensure that I get both light and dark meat, which adds more flavor. So don't mind me here for a minute while I grind up all this chicken in my secondhand KitchenAid mixer. Even the meat grinder attachment was secondhand. Ten bucks. So look for those deals, folks. They're out there. Seasonings. Got smoked paprika, onion and garlic powder, kosher salt and pepper. Now all we got to do is mix those ingredients together. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and get some Swiss cheese sliced into a quarter inch to three eighths inch slices. And here I've got some deli sliced ham. Just lay down two slices with a Swiss cheese chunk, fold it over into two flops and there you have it. Getting ready for our cordon blues. Now on some wax paper I'm going to throw down a scoop of that meat mix. Fold the paper over in half and press out a patty. And you're looking for about 3 eighths of an inch in thickness here. And you want it more egg shaped than you want it round. And you're going to need two of them for a top and a bottom. Now whichever patty is the biggest, I'm going to lay down our ham and cheese right in the center and then very carefully lay the other patty over the top. Now you newbies might want to use saran wrap. As you see we got a little extra on the side. You can technically cut that out if you'd like, but it's kind of a pain. I like to just fold in the wax paper and press that meat back into itself on all sides. Without using a mold of some kind, this is the only way I know how to do it to make them all uniform. Then you should be able to just peel it off the paper and lift it up and just pat it on all sides, make sure it's exactly the way it should look, completely enclosed. Then just go ahead and throw it down on a cookie sheet. And then once you've got one of these all the way filled up, you can take it straight to the freezer and freeze for 45 minutes. In the meantime, we're going to need an egg wash. So a few eggs and some Louisiana hot sauce. Just like my number one fried shrimp recipe here on YouTube. By now our patties should be frozen. And they're not frozen all the way through, it's just to firm up the outsides. Makes it easier to go ahead and dunk into the flour and get our breading going. And the flour is the most important part to make it stick here with the egg wash. It turns into a paste when you add it to the breadcrumbs. Then the crispy crust won't crack and fall off once it's cooked. Just be sure to get all sides. Toss it in a bowl, shake it in a bag, whatever your thing is, just do it well. And it should look something like this. Now just put it back where you got it, rinse and repeat. Once you got a full tray ready to go, you could either bag it and tag it, freeze it all over again and save it for later, or put it straight in the oven and bake it 375 degrees Fahrenheit for about 45 minutes. In the meantime I like to make a gravy, so I'm going to throw some butter in a hot pan, add some freshly chopped garlic. Come on now, get out of there. Now I'm going to add some heavy whipping cream. Stir that in till it boils. Then add some more cream. Now this is the basic start of an Alfredo sauce, but we're going to add some different ingredients. Starting with some Dijon mustard some honey, a squeeze of lemon juice, a pinch of salt and pepper, and some Parmesan cheese. Now it should thicken up pretty quickly once you stir all of these ingredients in. If not, just let it reduce over a simmer. Then you want to add some dried chives.
Then of course give that a taste and make sure it's to your liking. Then just remove it from the heat. By now our chicken should be done. And it looks like I just might have sprang a leak. But that's a good sign because it means we cooked all the way through. But let's be sure and cut this one open for you. Yup, the only pink I see is the ham and it's winking at me. But for posterity, you should be hitting 165 degrees Fahrenheit internal temperature. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Or unsubscribe. I really don't care anymore. You likes it or you don't. Check out my instant potatoes, huh? 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 Ooh, and that gravy. And there you have it. Chicken cordon bleu right here in the poor man's gourmet kitchen. Thank you for watching and be sure to stop by poormansgourmetkitchen.com for more recipes and exact ingredients.